Watch out for unbalanced flows. And, and this is pretty simple. You've got to bounce. Don't ignore this. Everybody thinks it's so simple. You have to bounce. So here we go with an equipment room with one water heater, one circulator. And this is like a hotel with a high-rise section, say make floors on one side of the hotel, and the other side of the hotel, you've got to you know, run out one level. How do you make that flow together? Here's your problem. Look at the research line length for going from riser number 12 back to the water heater versus the research line length coming in from the high rise. In other words, the red piece of research pipe is much longer than the blue piece of research pipe, just physically not the same distance. And you've got a little bitty pump. Remember, this is a 2-3 GPM pump normally. How are you going to balance that? And if you don't balance it, water is going to take the path of least resistance. So the high-rise portion is going to get pretty good water supply. It's going to keep pretty good hot water to the fixtures. The low-rise section out the rise of 13, it's not going to get any hot water out there at low loads. You're going to have a big problem at night when there's very little draw. Bottom line is you've got to put a circuit setter. You've got to put an auto flow. You've got to put some kind of lead-free device in there to make sure you balance it so you get flow on both sides. Just that simple. It's not a complicated statement. Uh, we did all the calculations here, which I wish we had time, but it we're back to GPM and head required each one. You're going to find the numbers are extremely low. Four feet ahead one way, five feet ahead the other way. So very high, but very, very low head loss, very low flow rates, very small pump. We're back to that same pump. We're back to a series 100 and NVF 25. And you're back to two GPM, a three GPM, five, six feet ahead. How are you going to balance it? You've got to put circuit setters. You've got to put flow limiters. You have to do some balance. In fact, you may have to upsize your circulate a little bit to make sure you've got enough flow to balance. A circuit setter half inch at 0.25 GPM is impossible to read. So you've got to keep that in mind. So let's take a little look as we go. We also recommend to go ahead and upsize your return pipe a little bit. If we make the return 3 quarter inch minimum versus a half, we make it more self-balanced. We reduce the friction loss in the return piece of pipe. It makes it more inherently self-balancing because we've taken away a lot of the friction loss. So we just recommended that we make that return line, that red line, we recommended make sure we go to 3 quarter inch, and, and that would make it more self-balanced. So what a couple comments. Anywhere you've got multiple recirculation from different fixtures or different areas of the building, you're going to have to balance to get hot water to the fixtures. And if you don't, you're going to have big issues. In summary, we would recommend you really like to see you use three-quarter inch return. Can you make a half work? Sure you can. But we would prefer to see you use three-quarter. It just solves a lot of problems that you're never going to have if you just go ahead and standardize that your minimum return line size is a three-quarter inch. You're going to solve a lot of your problems. So watch out for unbalanced riser flows. We talked about this. We want to make sure we do use the, the lead-free stuff. All the B&G circuit setters, just for the record, are lead-free. Feel free to use them on plumbing. They work great. You must balance. So here's a little hotel at World's Fair, and we're keeping it real simple. Uh, in 1983-84, out in Knoxville, Tennessee, and I was personally involved. And which free hotel room did they give me? to go out and help fix this. I couldn't get a hotel room, make a long story short. And the owner said, if you'll come fix this, Chris, uh, I'll, I'll give you a free room. Now, the problem was the uh, brand new hotel, people were complaining they couldn't get hot water in the morning. It was after everything had been off any length of time, you go take a shower, take you forever to get hot water in certain sections of the hotel. Not the whole hotel. Certain pieces of the hotel could not get hot water. First thing in the morning would take minutes and minutes, five, ten minutes, and people would just get irritated. So here's a here's a piping chart for that. So you see we got risers, we got a water heater on the right hand side, a research pump, it's been sized research pumps, plenty big, no big deal. Research line, but I hope you quickly realize there's no balancing valves. There's no balancing valves at the top where the little red research lines tie in. And this is direct return piping. By the way, I think it's kind of good for you young designers to kind of understand this research pump really is a closed system calculation because really the only time the research pump really comes into play to solve your problems is when you have no draw. As soon as someone takes a shower, obviously plumbing is an open system. But the research pumps really come into play. They really do their job 
when nobody's taking any water out and you're just trying to keep everything hot and by the definition research we're going around and around and around so it's really kind of a closed system head loss calculation but again you got a direct return set of piping here you see that first riser where do you think that research pump is going to flow if there's no balance it's going to go through that very first riser number one that's where all the water is going to be so sure enough as you move out to the left to riser three four five and six the people on a rise of six in the morning time could not get hot water. It took a long, long time. The poor, the poor old person on rise of six in room M at the top, he was, he or she was the last person in the hotel to get hot water. So that's my free hotel room. So they gave me my free hotel room at the very top of rise of six, and the owner said, "Chris, free hotel room, but you got to take a shower at two thirty in the morning." And you kind of laugh, but you see the point. The point was. He knew where the problem was. He didn't know why he wanted it fixed. So how would you fix the problem? Pretty simple. And I clicked back and through, back and forth again. I just added circuit setters to the top of the riser. See what I did? But the problem now is I even put a circuit set on riser number six. Maybe didn't need it, but uh, I, I put them on every riser manually. Now the problem I got now, the flow rate's 0 0.2, 0 0.3 GPM. It's kind of hard to read. But really, the simple thing to do here, the way we did this, we put our hands on the research pipe. We started throttling back at riser one, two, three, four, five, and six until number six riser. That would always be wide open now. The pipe, the circuit center, they would always be wide open. So I felt some warmth with my hands. Just that simple. So we got hot water there at night. With everything off, I had hot water flowing through that piece of pipe. And then we gradually changed the setting on all of them to every riser at night had hot water touched to your hand going through. That's how we did it. We couldn't read the circuit setters, but that worked fine. Put our hands on it, worked like a champ. And that's how we solved the problem. It's working fine today. So lead-free circuit setters are required. Just kind of keep that in mind. Circuit setters are work fine, but you're probably going to have to do a hand reading. You're probably not going to be able to put a readout kit on it and actually read the flow. Uh, you might want to go to an auto flow type of balancing device or some flow limiter. Uh, Autoflow makes them down uh, NSF lead free, I think 0.3 or 0.4 GPM that you can order from the factory. But if you do that, then, you, then what would you have to do here? One, two, you got what, six risers. You have to make sure you're oversized your research pump to pump about three GPM to make sure you've got enough flow rate so each one of those things will work. I see a lot of engineers doing that, that they're putting flow limiters in each riser and um, Taking that minimum flow rate to make the flow uh, work, and they're making they're oversizing their research pump to make sure they got enough flow to make them to make it work. No, so making it self balance and making them self balance with a little flow limiter makes a lot of sense. So let's keep looking for the next possibility. We know about the lead free thing. I won't waste you a lot of time. I think you know everybody's got to go that way. It is just a matter of code. <laughs> Excuse me. The uh, B&G circuit setters, as I mentioned, are NSF, no big deal, you use them on plumbing. And we talked about typical risers coming back and forth, up and down. Basically, you want a check valve coming out of each one. Well, your red return line is coming. We want to make sure on the return side you have a check valve. So if your pressures get out of whack, you don't get reverse flow through the return line. You don't get reverse flow through the return line. So simple little comment, little check valves coming out of domestic hot water research lines, in every case, however they tie in. 